Well, hey there, everyone. I want to welcome you to another edition of Wednesdays in the Word. This is your midweek encouragement as we open God's Word and take some time to read it and reflect upon what it says. Uh, throughout 2021, I'll be using the uh, Bible reading plan, uh, referred to as F260. Uh, it is foundational readings through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation uh, through 260 days. Uh, we have copies of this F260 reading plan here at the church for you, or you can uh, find a link to that on the Replicate uh, Ministries website um, as well. And we encourage you to read along with us, and maybe you're reading your own Bible reading plan. And again, we encourage that as well, um, just to you know read God's Word and soak it in and meditate on it and rest in the promises and the truths uh, that you will glean from that time with God. Uh, this week, we are continuing to move forward, and the passage of Scripture I would like to share with you today comes from Genesis chapter 22. Uh, Genesis chapter 22. Uh, here we read of Abraham's testing. Uh, after waiting for years for a son to be born, and then after having God keep his promise and the birth of Isaac has taken place, uh, he is now being tested by God. Um, God has kept his promise to Abraham, as we have read in the previous chapters. Uh, and now in Genesis 22, God is asking Abraham to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment how he would have felt. Maybe he would have been frustrated. Maybe he would have been angry. For sure, he's probably wondering, why God? Why are you doing this? And I bet as, as this command was given, I bet his heart just sank because Abraham is a faithful man and he is obedient to the, to the word of God and to the ways of God. And so even though he doesn't understand what is happening, he doesn't understand this request, he is faithful and he immediately obeyed God, demonstrating his faith in God. And as you read Abraham's story, you can see that he has grown. I mean, from the beginning of Abraham's calling until now, you can see how he has grown to trust God and trust God's ways. And so as they're on this journey to sacrifice Isaac, uh, Isaac asks the question. He goes, where are we going to get the offerings? He goes, we got the wood, we got everything we need, but we don't have the lamb. And here's how Abraham responds in Genesis 22.8. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. I want you to let that soak in because that is extraordinary faith where Abraham says, God himself will provide the offering. And then if you turn to Genesis 22 verses 12 and 14, here's what happens. As Abraham is prepared to sacrifice his son, God speaks. Verse 12, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. Hmm. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as the burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. So today it is said, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. Man, God provided a sacrifice. I just love that. The Lord indeed provided. You know, this is a very powerful story. And it does teach us about faithfulness. It teaches us to trust the Lord. It teaches us that God provides. But the story points us to God's willingness to sacrifice his only son for you and me. Again, I'll just read this to you. He says, uh, you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. You know, that is pointing us to the New Testament where God does not withhold his only son from you and I. God will provide another sacrifice through Jesus that will atone for the sins of the world. Jesus is our substitute. 
you know, we deserve to hang on that cross because of our sins. We deserve death. We deserve to be punished for our sins. But yet God loves us enough where he sent his son, Jesus, his only son, to take our place. Just like he sent the ram to take Isaac's place. What I think is so interesting about the story is that the ram, is, his horns are in a thicket or a thorn bush. And as Jesus is nailed to the cross, he is wearing a crown of thorns around his head because he is that sacrificial lamb. It is such a wonderful truth. And so I want to ask you today, since God willingly loves you enough to send his son to die for you, why would you not offer everything, even your lives, to him? What is God calling you to do today? What is he asking you to do? Maybe you're afraid that you don't have the skills. Maybe you're afraid you don't have the tools. Maybe you're afraid you don't have the know-how or the willingness. But I want you to hear those words. God will provide. Maybe you're lost in your sin. Maybe you have a hole in your heart, a God-sized hole, and you're just trying to fill it with all kinds of things. You know that you've made mistakes. You know that your life is messed up. But I want you to hear something. Jesus died for you, and God loves you. And you don't have to change anything about yourself. You just have to obey Christ. You have to follow Christ, accept him into your heart, and he will begin the process of cleaning you up. For his blood will wash us as white as snow. There is no sin too great that God cannot forgive. And if you need to place your faith and trust in him today, I would encourage you to do so. I would encourage you to confess your sins, turn away from this world and turn to God. What's holding you back from that decision? What's holding you back from what God is calling you to do? I'll leave you with this thought. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. May God bless you for the rest of the week. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the truth that it reveals to us about who you are and what you've done for us. We're so grateful that you are a God who provides. You provide for our every need. And you provide your son as a sacrifice for our greatest need, and that is being saved from our sins. Father, we thank you for that truth. Help us to be disciplined, to obey you. Help us to not withhold anything from you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.